So this oh. is special, isn't it? It is hey. really special. I can't tell you how I love this. <laughs> I can tell so, you're so excited. I must just take this off. I've been dying to do this. Oh, yes. See, all of these holes here tell a story to do with lots of transformations that this clock's had. So the holes are saying that something else was there before? Yeah, it's like a house. You, you wouldn't expect a house to stay the same. No. Uh, for 400, 400 years, years, it yeah. would have, you know, uh, new windows, yeah. it would have central heating, it's, yeah, it's yeah. modernised, and this clock is the same. So even though bits have been taken away yeah. and added, yeah. it's still special? Oh, gosh, yes, yeah. yeah. Cool. So then, what's wrong with it, and what have you got to do? Got to get a pendulum for it and an old weight as well to drive it. It could be just very, very worn, but I won't know until I have a close look at it. All right. If there's anything I can help you with, just let me know. Fantastic. Thank you, Jay. No problem. When this lovely old hand-cut screw was being made, a lot of people thought that the world was still flat, there was no electricity, but they still made beautiful items like this. It's incredible. Now, this is very unusual. This is a much later escapement, which is the part of the clock that uh, the power escapes to the pendulum. And I think it may have had several replacements in its life. I think I'm, I'm just going to clean everything very, very carefully, and then I'll make a decision on which way forward to go. It'd be lovely to get it ticking again. Meanwhile, Steve will be using his 35 years of horology knowledge to try and pinpoint exactly why time had stood still for this clock. I've cleaned all the parts of the clock now, and I'm just going through it step by step, doing lots of little repairs. One of the, the big things that I've found is that the escapement, which is the part of the mechanism that actually ticks and transfers the power from the, the mechanism to the pendulum, is set up completely wrong. And I've got this unit here, which is called a depthing tool. You can see the teeth of the escape wheel in turn hit the pallets and actually push it side to side. At the moment, this pallet here is completely the wrong angle. So I'm going to put a piece of steel in here to correct the shape of this. So hopefully it will work correctly. got everything ready now, so I'm going to start off by reassembling the, the mechanism. I've worked on a lot of ancient clocks before, and I'd love to know all the different stages and what's been done and where it's been around. I would imagine it's been worked on at least, ooh, 40 times. Just threading the chain into the clock. As the weight goes down, it runs both the, the clock side of the, the clock and also the strike at the same time. So I've got a couple of weights. I'll try the lighter one first. It's always good to have a, the lightest weight possible on the clock. That's quite a good speed of, a, of the strike. Now I've just got to see whether it actually drives the ticking part, the actual clock part of the clock. I've got an old pendulum that I've found that I think will suit. Good. I might have to do a few more adjustments yet, but that's ticking away nicely. 